Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melvin Way. I have many plant growing series on my YouTube channel. This is a plant growing series about growing grapefruit trees from seeds. I start counting it as day zero. And this is how I typically cut open citrus fruits these days. I slice the outside like this so I can uh, gnaw off the, the fruit flesh with my upper teeth and sort of enjoy the taste of the fruit flesh uh, against my tongue and this is after I've eaten it so this is a Rio Star grapefruit it's grown in Mexico and there's only two big seeds in this particular one and a bunch of uh, medium sized ones that are very wrinkly and very small sized ones so my instinct tells me only to use the big seeds because I believe that those are uh, the ones that are um, normally formed and the smaller ones are probably deformed and won't even germinate. I could be wrong though. So if you've tried germinating the small ones or the medium sized ones and you can get uh, fruit trees from those, uh, please let me know in the comments section. I just didn't want to take that risk. I probably could have planted them and there's plenty of the small and medium sized ones as you can see here left over. I just didn't think that those would get off to a good start so I didn't use them. I know only having two seeds to start a plant growing series is somewhat of a risk but I have a high degree of confidence because I've grown uh, lemon and other citrus uh, this way with a uh, very high germination rate. So I'm using some hydrogen peroxide to keep the mold at bay for a few days. So I have a sterile a zipper bag and this spray bottle filled with 3% hydrogen peroxide. Just spray a little bit in there and I thought well that looks kind of wet so I'm just going to put a tissue in there and the hydrogen peroxide will keep everything sterile and mold free for a few days within reason. But if you were to keep this in a Ziploc bag for say a month or something longer um, eventually you would get mold. Um, unless you really, really doused it every day with hydrogen peroxide. But that's um, sort of not a great environment for uh, germinating seeds. That's why once these things start germinating, people take them out as soon as possible. But in my case, I'm just putting them here in the dark in a Ziploc bag with a tissue soaked with hydrogen peroxide because I don't have my pot ready yet and my growing medium. I have plenty of homemade planters like this. And so it's day one and this is a planter made of essentially uh, soft plastic waste baskets um, stacked on top of each other with holes drilled in the bottom and this is basically all sand that you're looking at that I got from uh, Lowe's so I used a lot of play sand before and I also mixed it in with some uh, filtered California hill dirt, basically clay soil for the most part. It's very thick, um, typically reddish, but at this point, after several growing series, I've decided to reduce the clay content more and more over time to the point where it's um, less than 10% of the total composition. It could be far less, but I don't want to throw out all of this uh, perfectly good sand with just a little bit of clay mixed in. Um, just for the sake of purity and starting over and um, this is a homemade planter so it's got drainage holes on the bottom I don't want people to be confused and think that water never drains out of these things and that I'm over watering water basically runs out within a few minutes and it's true that I can still over water if I keep watering these uh, pots every few days but if I water with about a frequency of uh, once every two weeks, maybe a week and a half or every week during the summer when it gets really hot, then it should be fine. So the sand compacted after I watered that first time. So I've got to add some more dry stuff and repeat that process again because I don't want several inches or centimeters of um, space at the top of each pot. Let's say maybe inch and a half deep. Uh, two inches at the most. Um, that's the most I want. I want to give my plants the most uh, amount of growing medium. 
So the reasoning behind this is I want to provide as much thermal mass as possible in addition to the insulation of the dual layers of trash cans to protect the root systems from heat shock and cold shock. Also a greater volume of sand with a little bit of clay soil mixed in can really uh, hold on to much more water and nutrients and provide for a more stable environment that way so it's not suddenly too wet and suddenly too dry after just a few days of not watering or watering. So in general the more uh, soil mass you have, growing medium mass, the better off you're going to be and of course nothing beats being planted in the great outdoors in the earth itself but I don't have access to land and I only have partial sun on these balconies so this is the best I can do. It's day two. You'll notice that the composition looks a little bit muddy because of the clay soil. So even just 10% of that, which in and of itself is not 100% clay soil, it's maybe uh, 30%, maybe it's 20%, maybe it's 40%. It could be higher. Uh, I don't know. I haven't done any testing. Um, I haven't done a sedimentation experiment in a jar or anything like that to sort of guesstimate the clay content, the true clay content. But um, this is mostly sand at this point, so it's probably like 95% sand, uh, something like that. So I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit and take out my seeds and plant them. And how you want to plant this is, um, you know, it's up to your own discretion. You can sort of dig holes with your fingers and have uh, the seeds be a little bit spaced out so the root systems don't bump into each other right away. I wouldn't plant them in the middle, just right adjacent and uh, have them crowd each other. And uh, you can just put the seed in there and how deep you want it to be is also up to your discretion. Uh, I think in this case I had holes that were maybe uh, almost an inch deep or maybe beyond and then later on I just kind of felt like maybe that's not an, an optimal depth but if I were to just plant such big seeds maybe half a centimeter down or you know a quarter inch something like that then they might just get busted all out of shape in terms of when the roots and shoots come out then um, it sort of disturbs its own orientation because it's so uh, shallowly buried that um, it doesn't have enough sand to anchor it so I kinda dug that out a little bit and um, you know put the seeds sideways because I felt well uh, I didn't really pay attention to the polarity or the orientation of these seeds and I don't have prior experience so what if I orient the seeds wrong and then the root systems have to travel an extra distance and curve downwards and the shoot systems have to do the same to bust out. So this part is optional, just spray the surface um, if you want with 3% hydrogen peroxide and this will sterilize a lot of this. There's a lot of uh, microbes in there and keep the top layer at least sterile for a few days and it also oxygenates. It breaks down into uh, molecular oxygen and water so it basically provides for what the seedlings need. They don't need carbon dioxide at this point. They're users. Um, they only need oxygen at this point to conduct respiration. And I'm putting plastic wrap over it just to preserve the moisture because this is in San Diego, California, USA. It's very dry uh, typically. So if I were to not do that, it would just dry out. So it's day 28. I moved after just 13 months in my last condominium to this new apartment and you can see the germination is fresh, has that dry and cracked appearance um, near where the stems are coming out, especially for this one. So that means I haven't watered uh, up until this time um, since basically the beginning from which the sand was moist and um, the sunlight on this balcony is better than what I had before by far but it's pretty much gone by 1 p.m. every day and you can see this is the apartment landscaping there's some houses in the distance uh, air conditioning compressors and uh, these huge pine trees that shed so much detritus and organic matter onto my balcony 
and that's a, a eucalyptus. Um, wait, actually, no, no, that's um, yeah, it's like a Peruvian pepper tree, I believe. So anyway, um, that's my setup. I have lots of space, and basically, I've got my lemon seedlings, which are looking pretty good. There's a lot of spiders here, and they spin webs on everything. So um, yeah, mostly pines and pepper trees, and they shed a lot of detritus, even into this pot. Spraying some distilled water to avoid overwatering. So uh, this is something that I do selectively, just to sort of get all the dust off, and also provide a tiny focused quantity of water to my uh, developing seedlings. And later on, I'll just do flood watering. I don't want to just flood the pot right now because these seedlings aren't that well established yet and if they're not anchored really firmly into the ground they could just fall over so on day 39 I have these beautiful two seedlings so that's two out of two it's pretty easy and I just listed a bunch of adjectives that I use to describe the beauty of these things they have such lustrous waxy leaves it's a very verdant green um, they're for the most part upright and growing very well so I really couldn't ask for a more perfect start um, the leaves are just uh, yeah they're works of art at this stage and there are no blemishes really well this one looks like it's a little bit asymmetrical but um, on both sides actually but uh, yeah, maybe none of that stuff matters anyway. So um, I'm just really enjoying the beauty of these two seedlings. And they get a few hours of morning sun every day. And I'm going to do my first fertilization four weeks in. So that's uh, miracle Grow in powder form, supplemented with crushed vitamins. And of course, plants don't need all the vitamins that we do, but I use crushed vitamins to supplement because they've got calcium carbonate um, they provide easy to absorb calcium and other things uh, magnesium iron zinc and all these other trace metals that can uh, complement what the miracle grow is missing because miracle grow doesn't have everything that a plant needs in it it has most of what it needs um, so you can see all these different uh, elements in here and it's basically that stuff on the right side of what I was just showing you that is what a plant needs in addition to what you see here which is a water soluble miracle grow that you put in a watering can um, yeah I just sprinkle it on the surface to control the amount without having to make a messy dilution in the kitchen so yeah this has all the macronutrients and some of the micronutrients a plant needs to grow it's day 66, so a bit of time has elapsed, over two months, and it's really dusty out here. So it's just full of detritus, uh, spiders, and their webs. So uh, it's taken a while just to clean this um, apartment and clean the balcony. So you can see there's more growth and development. It um, has gotten off to a better start than I think all of my previous citrus growing attempts. So with experience, um, your plant growing uh, adventure should get better over time if you're learning from your lessons. These leaves are a little bit weird. Um, they're sort of like a, a segment before like a long leaf uh, popping out at the top. Um, yeah, it might just be a feature of the stem in the early phases. Uh, certainly I've seen things like that with uh, lemon seedlings and I'm just doing a flood watering. Um, I'm trying to be as gentle as possible and aim this uh, water flow away from the seedlings to the vacant corners just so I don't knock anything over. But it's been quite a while since I watered actually, so they, um, these seem fine, but there are some other plants of mine that sort of dried out a little bit, um, particularly the lemon, uh, the two seedlings, the saplings at this point. So um, those are still soldiering on though. Uh, they've lost a bit of their leaves here, but um, that's sort of expected because um, 
yeah, most plants don't hang on to their leaves for more than a year or two, typically, unless it's something like the Joshua tree. So it's day 75. These plants have a very short and stout appearance, which is great. There's a lot of foliar development compared to stem development. It's actually not good for plants to get all spindly and be falling over all the time from their own leverage and weight. So these are looking really healthy. And I think the future holds a lot of promise for this plant growing series. Uh, please stay tuned to my YouTube channel for further updates. And thanks for watching.